everyone, welcome inside the State Champs studio. I'm joined with Brian Chittister and Donnie Dreyer for our final episode of Total Softball Player of the Year. Can you guys believe it? It's been a great year. The season has just flown by as usual, you know, but it's so much fun and we had such great softball to watch. Yeah, so that's the first thing we're going to dive into. What can you take away from this year? My biggest takeaway, you know, coming into the year, we kind of had a good idea of what teams were going to be there in the end. I mean, we had a pretty good idea. Um, but some of the surprises were I really um, thought Ava Bradshaw would be right back there in the end again, uh, just carrying her team all the way. But then, you know, Allen Park had different thoughts, and it really, it really kind of showed that you, you need to compete as a team. And, you know, Allen Park brought it up with they, they just had so much talent and so many horses and it's just made it such a deep team that they actually, you know, rose to the top and, and got it done, at least at the Division One level. Right. And with every team, there are so many good players this entire season. We're from Division One down to Division Four, So it was hard to pick our total softball player of the year. But, Donnie, we've touched on so many players throughout this season. What, what can you say about these athletes out there? Um, I just can't believe the diversity that we have, yeah. um, not only with the hitters, but the pitchers, and even the division levels. If you look at you know, our top 10 and the watch list, you know, we have kids now at Division One, Division Two, II, Division Three, II, Division Four, and freshmen, sophomores, juniors. It's, it's a tremendous mix. And, uh, you know, we had our front runners, as you mentioned. It was Ava Bradshaw that was in the Final Four. We expected at the beginning uh, someone like a Megan Nectar line was going to be in the top four. And we had those studs, you know, do their thing. But we also had a lot of other kids that, uh, like, look at look at Van Brandt. Van Brandt and Pelosi. Uh, amazing. Pelosi came in as a freshman. Oh, my You're God. Talking, yeah. You know, just surprised everybody. It's like, who's this young kid on the scene? <laughs> kind of like Ava last year, you know, and they just came in and dominated. And and then trying to figure it out, you know, and, and, you know, we've got all this talk about who should win it, and we always go to the criteria. Right. We go to the criteria and we break it down. And um, I'm glad we have a criteria because, Brian, it would have been really hard just to... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So many great athletes out there, but I think it's time, you guys. Without further ado here, I don't, do we do a drum roll? Are we ready for this? <laughs> I don't know. Without further ado, our 2022 Total Softball Player of the Year from Macomb, Dakota, Megan Nectarline. <laughs> Megan, thanks for joining us up here. And first off, I just want you to feel this trophy here. It's a little heavy. <laughs> Very happy. <laughs> yeah. Well, congratulations. How are you feeling that you are our total softball player of the year? You know, I feel honored. Put it right here. Oh, okay. Right there. We don't yeah. want you to have to carry it. <laughs> um, I feel honored. You know, this is, it, it means a lot. You know, just the fact that I had this opportunity, you know, it's a great feeling. Um, I couldn't have done it without my coaches. You know, um, my pitching coaches, my hitting coaches, you know, they've got me to where I am today and my teammates, obviously, you know. Played with a, I played with a great group of girls and, you know, they they were supporting me through all this and I couldn't have got here without them either, so. So, how long have you been pitching? When did you start? Um, I started when I was seven years old. Seven years old. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I, to get to this level, we, we know that everybody has, a, you know, a great work ethic, work ethic, but tell us a little bit about Megan Nectarline and your pitching. So, you know, what are your go-to pitches? How do you attack hitters? Share a little of that information with us. Um, so, I'd say... My best pitch is probably my changeup. Um, I try to work the count, get ahead of the hitter so I can throw my pitch. In, uh, in dominating fashion, I, I might add, um, averaging almost 13 strikeouts per seven innings, an ERA rate around .8. I mean, that's amazing, especially the level of competition. And I got to tell you, one of the big um, factors in you winning this trophy was at semis. I mean, not only oh, pitching yeah. a great game, but having the game-winning home run. I mean, what did it feel <laughs> like hitting that ball over the fence? Because you smoked that thing. <laughs> you know, I was just like, so, you know, my count was 1-0, um, and it was just right there, and I was like, oh, this is my pitch to hit, and then it went right off my sweet spot. I was like, wow, that felt good, you know, and then my team was just there cheering me on, and I was like, this is an amazing feeling, you know, I couldn't do it without my team, so. I want to ask you this though, only a junior and you've been in some big moments in the circle. What's going through your head when you're standing in there and it's a big game? You know, it's it's always a little nerve wracking because of the competition I'm playing, you know. They're great, they're great hitters, you know, they're great teams, um, but it's also really exciting. Hey, at the next level, you're going to Kent State. Tell us just a, you know, a brief thing, a little brief information about, you know, what led up to that decision uh, about going to the next level and playing for Kent State and Eric Oakley. I went on my visit. You know, I talked to Coach Oakley a couple times and all the rest of the coaches. And, you know, I was like, this is a place I want to be. You know, I fit, I fit really well. Like, I saw myself 
in the future. And I was like, you know, like, this is a really good school for me, you know, like, I met the girls and I just like loved everything about like the college, so. Yeah. And uh, we know you're going to do great things at uh, at Kent State, but you still have an another year of uh, yeah. another year of high school. Another year with Dakota. So, last question here: What has the game of softball meant to you all these years and leading up to this point? I mean, winning this award, you still have another year left to reach some goals with Dakota, and then you have college ahead of you. What does the game of softball mean to you? Um, it means a lot. You know, I've been playing for seven or since I was seven. You know, it's something that you know. I feel confident with, you know, just the fact that I get to be with all these girls, my teammates, you know, my coaches supporting me, you know, and getting me to all these places, you know, I couldn't do without them, so it means a lot. Donnie and I are joined now by Dan Vitale and Shelby Weeks, coaches for Dakota. You guys, a great season all around, and Shelby, we'll start with you first. What can you say about Megan Nectarline? Megan is just an all-around athlete, really. She's a dominant pitcher in the circle for us. Um, she does a great job leading her team, um, getting, rallying the team behind her, and kind of just being that force in the circle for us. And, and Dan, um, I got to ask you, I mean, not only at the high school level, but you've coached Megan since, as she say, about seven years old. Uh, <laughs> what makes her so good? Megan, yes, you're correct. I, I've known her since uh, she was seven. She's a hard worker. Um, I remember her co going to lessons every day, and that kid never misses a day of lessons. So she works very hard, and she's a real coachable player. Shelby, you're always around the girls and everything. What's something about Megan that, from an outsider who's not at practice every day, we might not know about her? Megan is the goofiest kid that we have. <laughs> she is always smiling. You'll never catch her without a smile. Um, even when it's the most serious of games, she, she always knows how to put a smile on everyone's face. How do you guys feel when she gets those big game strikeouts? I mean, the girls on the field are pumped up, and when you guys come in for the huddle, what's that emotion like for you guys as coaches? Well, I started the season with black hair, so <laughs> now it's gray, but uh, it's a relief. Uh, having Megan on the mound um, is, is a joy, just to watch her and under the pressure. And she handles the pressure like nothing. It, it doesn't bother her. That's why she's so good. She handles the pressure, and I, I just see a, her level being the highest it could be when she plays. With every great athlete, there's a village behind that player. And Megan, your dad is here with us now, Jim, who has probably been with you every step of the way. So what can you say about having your family surrounded by you? You know, it's great, you know, having the support, you know, also my family. You know, taking me to all my pitching lessons, hitting lessons, you know, all my practices, you know, I couldn't have gotten here without them, so. Yeah, I can only imagine a lot of driving around the state, yeah. too, I'm sure. <laughs> hey, Jim, as, as a coach, I always say that I get the players for two hours, the parents get them for the other 22 hours. What are you and Megan working on ever since she was seven, those 22 hours a day? Because she's obviously done very, very well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, I would say more than anything else, I think we probably work on the uh, change up a ton. Um, so um, she's a sweetheart. Uh, you can just tell she's the sweetest person in the world. She's always laughing. I, I love her absolutely to death. Um, but yeah, I mean, to me, pitching starts with getting kids off balance. So ever since she was 10, I mean, Megan wasn't the hardest thrower in the state. She never really was one of the hardest throwers in the state for a long time. So we had to keep pitchers off balance or hitters off balance. And the change up was always her pitch that she could always use to kind of you know, increase the speed of her fastball, I guess. So um, that's always been our go-to when it's all said and done, so. What does a, a normal week look like for her in terms of her work off the field? Yeah, I mean, Megan, you know, she's been doing pitching lessons religiously for, I mean, since, yeah, she's been eight years old. She has amazing pitching coaches along the way. I mean, uh, it's, it's funny how that kind of works, the transition from one pitching coach to the next. Um, often just for, for whatever reason, but getting those different perspectives and stuff, I think at an early age also has helped her a ton to get different ideas with different expectations and stuff. So, um, like I said, I don't remember a week without her getting hitting lessons or pitching lessons or whatever it might be. So, and I think uh, another thing with her control and that kind of stuff, her, if you ever saw her, uh, her grandpa bowl, he's one of the best bowlers out there. He's unbelievable and he's so precise. He's so balanced. When I look at Megan pitching, and I know she's pitching well, the reason why she can hit her spots is when she's balanced. She's yeah. just, yeah, remarkably balanced. So. Jim, when you're in the stands watching her and, you know, in big moments like the state semifinals, for example, what are you feeling? What's your emotion up there? Because if it were me, I would be a nervous wreck. I don't even know if I could watch. Yeah, I, 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 I'm 
the biggest, most nervous wreck you could ever possibly imagine. I, it's I'm awful. I don't, <laughs> I don't know what my problem is. I <laughs> literally oh. <laughs> have issues with it. But yeah, I'm. Uh, the thing about, I must say about her though is more often than not, she calms my nerves pretty quickly. Though I mean, she's remarkable in those pressure spots. It amazes me how often she gets out of trouble. Um, I always knock on wood. I mean, it's like, is this ride ever gonna end? You know, it's been such an amazing journey. And she's been so spectacular along the way. It's, it's remarkable. I may be able to help with that question. He does not sit in the stands. Ah, no, he's always pacing around. We, he, always, he, we all make fun of him. We call him Sasquatch, Big Bird. <laughs> he gets about thirty steps or thirty thousand steps in a game. Hey, uh, it's okay. I don't think anybody would blame you. <laughs> yeah. uh, but but in all seriousness and and all that, you know nervousness and stuff i can tell i can tell you enjoy it i can tell that uh you know you guys are proud of what she's done there's no doubt um it's funny as a parent i always talk to megan about what she has to improve and what she has to work on and why she needs to be where she needs to be having never ever done any of the things that she's done in my life you know i've never been <laughs> exceptional at anything here and i'm coaching try, trying to coach somebody to be amazing so it's it's always kind of funny how that kind of works